Uh, good afternoon, my fellow Gandhians and uh, my listeners. This is Samsudin Sar once again making this audio on this um, 15th day of March 2021, Monday, speaking from the Gambia around 1 o'clock p.m. I have to make this video audio purposely to address this chimpanzee looking deadbeat called Reed Brody, whom I understand has been a counsel for Human Rights Watch and uh, was instrumental in convicting He's in Habri of Chad for crimes against humanity he had committed while serving as president of Chad. At that, he also contributed in the prosecution of Augusto Pinochet and Jane Claude Baby Doc of. Um, uh, the value of um, Haiti. Now they call him the dictator hunter. I have read his profile and I've seen a lot of his work uh, since the days of Ronald Reagan who once accused him of supporting the Sandinistas um, of Nicaragua when we all know that people like him we are all in support of communism rather than capitalism in this world. And, uh, you know, time have changed and all of them are now running away from the Sandinistas, you know, because, you know, um, of course, politics evolves and times change. So what this guy doesn't understand is the conditions of the world when he was convicting he sent Habre in the 90s in Senegal and perhaps supported by these European lankies and slavish mentality of the Senegalese leadership. You know, those days are gone. And uh, um, uh, he has made all efforts to bring George Bush to justice for the crimes committed by America against humanity, including torture of prisoners of conscience, detention centers all over the world committed by America, which are atrocious. In fact, you call them the murder of all atrocities. And he couldn't. And he's an American. He was born in Brooklyn. And uh, um, but what did he do? He had to give up because he knows that America will not listen to his nonsense because states are not run the way he wants them to be run. If he is as dynamic and progressive as he has been trying to portray to himself of, what is he saying about what is going on in Myanmar or in China with the Uyghurs, the Muslim Uyghurs? He is not saying anything. He is just one person who looks for job at the United Nations and the, one of the United Nations, of course, one of the most useless organizations in the world who just go on lobbying, people lobbying for positions and being given jobs and make names when, in fact, they are the most contradictory people in the world. The person he is trying to put in trying to convict Jamie, why can't he do it on um, George Bush and Tony Blair to make the world know these are bigger fish. They are bigger fishes. They lied to the world, invaded Iraq, killed thousands and thousands of hundreds of thousands of people. And now you want to turn the uh, pendulum or uh, turn the tides or, or, or flip the script and say that, yes, Jamie is a worse criminal than George Bush and uh, Tony Blair. You are an American, you cannot do anything about it. Besides, we just saw 
what happened to people like George Floyd in America. And uh, so many minority Americans, black Americans in particular, being subjected to the most brutal institutional and constitutional um, racism ever he, that existed in history. Have we had Reed Brody pursuing this aggressively or passionately? No, he is not. Because deep down, probably, he is one hell of a racist person who sees only crimes committed by Africans, but not crimes committed by Caucasians or white people, for that matter. Yes, he is. his father was, they said, was a Hungarian Jew, you know, who survived um, Nazi concentration come Second World War. But, I mean, like, what does that mean? We have seen worse people in this world. Kushner, um, uh, um, Donald Trump's in-law, you know, is a Jew. And he's here, his father was one of the worst criminals who's been pardoned by, 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 by Trump. Have you said anything about it? No, you will not. The crimes being committed in America are 10 times more than the crimes being committed anywhere in the world. But you don't want to passionately pursue this because if you know that they're going to burn your ass, America will, will, will reduce you to nothing. Read Brody. But again, um, uh, what I am now talking about is his commitment now to say that Jame has to be prosecuted for killing f foreign migrants in the country in 2005 based on the most discredited TRRC revelations ever in human history. You are a lawyer, Reed. Do you know that the junglers, whom you are calling a death squad, and that you are relying on them because they are the ones who confess their crimes, were just arrested without any due process of law being followed? You know that. That these guys were found in the streets, arrested, nobody read them their rights, Nobody charged them for anything. Nobody provided them with lawyers. And nobody told them why they were being taken to prison. And were in prison indefinitely for three damn years. Read. Three years, these guys were in jail. Their family members did not know what happened to them. They did not know what happened, why they were being jailed. And someday, the TRRC, invited them and say, say that you kill for Jame, say that you murdered immigrants and threw them in wells that can never be found anywhere, and you will go home. If you don't, you stay in prison indefinitely. Those who say they did not are still in prison, read. And where is your conscience? Where is your ethics? Where is your morality to accept this kind of evidence as a foregone conclusion that Jamie did this. Come on. You know, you guys are the ones who are destroying Africa. Yeah, the crimes being committed against Africa, the exploitation, the balkanization, the bastardization, you all sit down and watch it. You don't do anything. But anywhere you see the possibility of dividing Africans to conquer them and rule them as you have been doing for the past centuries, you will do it. Because you have some bunch of bastards in our continent who would support you. Because they are low lives, undereducated, ill-educated, and just uh, um, um, slaves to anything that is white. That's the mentality you are exploiting. Yes, you could do that in Senegal, because you know that in Senegal, a white person is greater than God to them. If you call a Senegalese, you are white. They think you have praised them better than anything you have given them in this world. A good person in Senegal is white. A successful person is termed white, is characterized as white. 
a truthful person is characterized as white. So when you when you landed at your airport and say, here I am a white man, listen to me, I want to get his and Habri. They say, yeah, that's the white man who tells the truth. They don't know your history. That you come in from a country that blacks are still being oppressed in the worst way. And we have seen the wake up call now. We haven't heard you say anything about the Black Lives Matter. You have not. Read. Did you ever say anything about um, uh, George Floyd? No. You probably was very happy that Derek Chauvin, that racist police, put his knee on his neck until he breathed his last breath. Yes. You know, so, but people don't hear you, but you can come to Africa. You see, the evidence you are collecting from our TRRC is not tenable anywhere because it's based on false fabrications. People come and tell lies upon lies upon lies. You listen to the tapes. They have been the transcripts. Read, and you will hear how many people, the conflicting stories over this. What happened was, we all know now, Eight people were killed by some of rogue elements of the security forces. Very rogue element of the security forces, which is in the UN report. The rest of the story is being, you know, cooked up. They, they forced these junglers to come and tell a story that never exists. So many graves, so many bodies. It doesn't ha exist. Kasama is just next door. You could we can you know commit a investigating team to go and look for these wells we, we, we will not miss them they should be there but it doesn't happen read eight people were killed and three people survived and they went back home listen to eric yao's statement and you will know the actual truth of what happened they came to banjul about 11 of them came to shore Three of them were arrested. The others ran into the town and were later captured and killed. The junglers never killed them. It was the rogue element because it was human trafficking. Idiot. It was human traffickers who took these guys' monies and killed them. When the state realized it later, you know, they, 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 they cooperated with the UN ECOWAS investigating body and told them the facts. What did you want? America today have been accused of American security forces have been and even British security forces have been accused of gross human rights violations. You know, abuse of their authority across the world. But when the IEC tried to step into America to say to ask for investigation, they kicked them out. Because they know governments don't run that way. The British even accepted, you know, um, uh, allegations against their troops in Iraq, you know, but they said they're not going to even investigate it. So who are you, Reed? This country is fragile. African countries are fragile. What are you trying to do can throw this country into a crisis that, you know, we will all regret. And what will you do? Run your ass to Brooklyn and sit in a nursing home and just play with your balls for the rest of your life? Have the conscience, guys. We don't need this shit from you people. The world is beyond this. You know, Minorities have been suffering for so long in this world. The world has just woken up to the reality and they are trying to correct the dynamics thanks to even, in fact, the COVID-19 that exposed all these anomalies of society. That minorities, black people, have been, you know, suppressed, you know, denied privileges, denied rights, denied opportunities over white people like you, white-skinned people like you. We are trying to change that, read, all across the world. And you are here running around, you know, thinking that you're the same person who we are when the Sandinistas were fighting a revolution and America was sending arms 
to, 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 to them and you know exchanging arms with oil with the Iraq, Iraqis at the time, no Iranians at the time when they were under sanction. Yes, Ronald Reagan called you a Sandinista supporter. And I know you were, because you were there supporting Marxism at that time, communism at that time. It has changed. Now you're trying to find relevance and say you have dealt with Hussein Habre. Now you're going to deal with Yaya Jane. Hussein Habre and Yaya Jane are two different people. And they are different times. Note that. Put it in your knuckle hair. And fucking get a haircut. You look like a, an owl. Or a, uh, what, what, what I, uh, a werewolf. Wolf. You know what I mean? Like, this is not going to run the world, my friend. We are trying to re reconcile, trying to wriggle out of these problems that we are facing after decades of, you know, um, what was, you know, a government that was appreciated by a lot of Gambians. He said, Habri is different. Don't forget that, you know, Jame is still love and being celebrated in the Gambia. Who said Habri was not? You know, and the IEC previously initially said that they had nothing to show for Jame's excesses that would warrant an ICC um, charges brought against him. Because there was nothing to show for it. It's just these so-called Ghanaians or these, um, uh, these, these, these migrants that were brought before the world by our useless TRRC who were biased. You see lies upon lies. And uh, you, you know, you want to take it from there. Please go and verify your facts. Talk to me if you want to, you know, ask for some Sudin Sar and you ask me and I will tell you what was wrong with every evidence you are collecting from this DRRC. It's all nonsense. They pay people to come and lie and you want to buy that and bring it before the world. We are here. We're going to continue talking because you want to break this country apart. Go. America has enough in their, in their plate for you to sort out. Don't play this fucking hypocrisy. We don't need it. Oh yes, that's what I'm going to say. You are a hypocrite. And the nasty one for that matter. No conscience. Would it destroy the world for what? I mean, like, let's be realistic. You know, yeah, because you are a white man. We still have those fools in Africa. The Uncle Tom's you have in America, they are still here. Who think anything that a white man says is right. And anything that a black man says is not right. That's why they are celebrating you. But you know if you read and be open-minded and be conscientious and look at the evidence being shown at the TRRC, you will know that this is not tenable anywhere. Because you can't arrest people, lock them up for years, and then turn around and say, if you say this, you go home. And, you know, they say it, and you say, eh, that's good. And the, those who say, we're not going to say it, are still locked up. And you still think... That is right, as a lawyer, as a human rights activist of your caliber, status, and experience. What kind of nut job are you? I don't buy these things, Reed. I've been hearing a lot about you, but you know, I am beginning to believe that you are mentally deranged. You need to sort yourself out. You know, you could have been progressive yesterday, but you know, today you are not. And that's normal. Intelligent people can turn stupid. Stupid people can turn, become intelligent. That has been scientifically established everywhere. You start high school, you are so outstanding. You go to college and you are a dummy. Likewise, you start high school, you are a dummy, you go to college, you become very outstanding. That's normal. You were probably one time very outstanding at a time when the world needed people like you. Now you look, you sound very stupid, read. Because you are not basing your facts on anything that is um, uh, verifiable. One-sided story from TRRC and you say you have got your story. That's stupidity at its best. Yes. And I wish, I don't know, whoever is listening to this audio, please try 
and forward it to wherever this stupid fool is called Reed Brody and let him listen to this and come back and follow what is happening at the TRRC. Every witness who came and talked about this um, uh, event of these Ghanaians or Nigerians or whoever migrant told different stories about the same topic, the same subject. Some say there were 39 Ghanaians, others say 44 Ghanaians, others say 57 Ghanaians. You know, you don't even know the number of people there because they are fabricating it. There were only eight people who were killed in this country, and those were the ones found. Perhaps including the one woman, the, the one person that some foolish witnesses last week, um, one only um, Sam and something Jalo, police officers, you know, they said they, 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 they found one dead body in the forest and told their corporal, and their corporal said, let's let bury him hastily. Let's not let, uh, let let's keep this away from our authorities. And they buried that person. Can they trace this, the, 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 the location where they buried that person? No, because it did not exist. They were lying. How could you do that? A police officer. And I'm talking about of the lowest rank, a constable. And the highest ranking among them was a corporal. Finding a dead body in the forest and deciding among themselves to hush it up and bury that person. What kind of people are you talking about? And these are the people you want to say have produced enough evidence to show that 45, 39, 40, 50, 66, 7 migrants were killed in this country? Come on. Tell us something else. Eric Yao, the, load, the survivor, go, he is in Ghana. Three of them survived. Eric Yao, Daniel, and Asian. You know, the Eric Yao came and said, when they landed at Banjul Port, not Barra, where this stupid uh, Martin Carey said they landed and they were shot at, and they went to the boat and landed to another place. Who will do that? Think about that. You went to a new terrain. You don't know this terrain. And you landed and asked three or six of your men to go and check, you know, your, your, your liaison person, your contact person. The moment they stepped off shore, they started shooting them and people screaming they have killed them. You went back to the boat and decided to land to another location. Does that make sense to you, Reed? And that's Martin Cherry's testimony, which has been disputed by um, Eric Yao. Eric Yao said they never stopped at Barra or anywhere. They never landed anywhere to send anybody on reconnaissance. They came straight to the port of Banjul because they were told the boat that was supposed to take them to Europe is in Banjul. And he was tasked to go and contact Lamin Tunkara, the main smuggler in the Gambia. And when he stepped up, they started chasing him, calling him thief, thief, and beating him up. And they eventually took him to the police station with three of his colleagues. But seven others ran into the town. He was in shore. He said seven or eight ran into the town. And those were the eight we found dead. And who did that? The security, group security element, police, the police officer. Jabe did not do anything about it. And whoever is going to represent Jame anywhere in the world, I will be willing to stand as a witness and expose this stupidity. Because what you are saying is stupid, Reed Brody. And if you think you have a done deal, you are fooling your stupid wise self. Have a nice day, sucker.